What's going on, friends? When it comes to big cruiser motorcycles of the big twin variety, pretty much every single manufacturer has thrown in the towel and surrendered to Harley Davidson and Indian. But other manufacturers that are still out there producing cruisers, they've gone away from the V twin and they've all went other directions. <laughs> Now, if you're in the market for a new heavyweight motorcycle, and I'm talking a big cruiser motorcycle that's going to have some heft to it and actually produce some torque running down the highway, you're going to run into some challenges there trying to find one that's not a Harley or an Indian. But the options that you will find out there, I don't want to say they're totally modeled after Harley Davidson, but that seems to be the direction every other manufacturer goes when shaping their motorcycles is they model them after the Harley. And guys, if you enjoyed the video today, please don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, and please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. So if you're searching for a big cruiser these days with a V-twin engine, as I mentioned, you're really gonna find yourself hard pressed to find anything that's not a Harley Davidson or an Indian, at least brand new. Of course, the used market, you can pretty much get whatever you're after on the used market. Now, when it comes to new motorcycles today, there are still a few options that aren't a Harley Davidson or an Indian, and unfortunately with Victory Folding, we don't have them as a new option anymore. Now with Indian and Harley Davidson's competition, these bikes generally tend to be less expensive. So that really leads me to wonder, is investing in a less expensive motorcycle in the long term really going to be worth it? In the cruiser and touring segment of motorcycles, there are other cruiser style and touring style motorcycles out there, but albeit without the V-twin engine. Now, the V-twin engine is just absolutely perfect for cruisers and touring bikes because these engines just produce so much power and torque down in the low RPM range, which when you're hauling all that weight with your gear, your luggage, your passenger, this is what gets you going and rolling down the road. And not to mention just the look, feel, and sound of a V-twin engine. It just all fits in that model of what a cruiser should be. And of course, as I mentioned, a lot of manufacturers, they do model their bikes after Harley-Davidson, and you're going to see that here in a little bit. So in years past, before Victory and Indian, we used to have all kinds of metric options out there. But if you're judging by the metric manufacturers today, you would probably think that the big heavyweight cruiser segment is pretty much dead. Well, the truth is, it's not dead. It is alive and well. It's just Harley-Davidson Indian have pretty much taken it over. Now, albeit Harley-Davidson Indian aren't selling the big cruisers like they would like, but make no mistake, they're still selling them in pretty good volume. So if you're looking at anything other than a Harley-Davidson or an Indian, the first bike that I have as an alternative today is the Yamaha Star Venture. Now, granted, this bike comes in way at the top of the price list, so just be prepared. Now for a Yamaha, this is quite a bit of money, but this bike does come feature packed. But mainly what I wanna focus on on the Yamaha is the heart of it. This thing has a 113 cubic inch V-twin engine, push rod actuated, four valve heads, unitized engine construction with a slipper clutch and a six speed transmission. So it really sounds like a good mix mash between the Harley Davidson and the Indian. We got the six speed transmission, both Harley and Indian have that. We have the slipper clutch. The Milwaukee 8 has that. We have the four valve head, which the Milwaukee 8 has. And of course we have the push rods that both the Harley Davidson and the Indian have. Now the Yamaha still being air cooled, it still puts down some pretty decent power. Now at the rear wheel, we're getting about 75 horsepower and roughly about 100 foot pounds of torque. So that's pretty on par with Harley Davidson and Indian's torque numbers albeit the Harley-Davidson and the Indian make more horsepower than the Yamaha. So, so far, sounds good, right? Yamaha got just about everything like a Harley. You know, honestly, it's got more features than either the Harley or the Indian standard, but let's talk price. This thing is just under $27,000. $26,999 brand new retail. Now, even while this is a premium motorcycle from Yamaha, I mean, this is primo, this bike is still right up there with the high-end Harley-Davidson's and the Indian. Now, granted, it's no CVO or Roadmaster, but the price comes pretty close. We're within two to $3,000. Now, $27,000, that's quite a bit of money for a brand that's usually known as being quite a bit cheaper than a Harley-Davidson or an Indian. 
Now at the other end of the spectrum, we have the Kawasaki Vulcan series. The Vulcan series is definitely heavily resembling the Harley Davidson. So first we have Kawasaki's Vulcan Vaquero. This bike has been around for well over a decade and there's really no denying that this thing is pretty well modeled after Harley Davidson's Street Glide. But Kawasaki has a very strong B-twin engine. 1700 cc's, 52 degree B-twin. This thing is liquid cooled. It is single overhead cam, but it also has a four valve head and a single pin crank. Now power on Kawasaki's V-Twin, it's a 1700 cc motor or 103 cubic inch. You're getting about 70 rear wheel horsepower and roughly about 90 foot pounds of torque. And this is at the rear wheel. So not too bad, huge price difference between that and the Yamaha, but you do give up a little bit of horsepower and torque both to the Harley, the Indian and the Yamaha. Now the price is definitely more like what we want to see compared to a Harley Davidson or an Indian with the price of a brand new Vaquero coming in at just $17,600. Still a quite a chunk of change, but that is a lot of motorcycle for the money. But at $17,600, that's quite a bit less money than a base Harley Davidson Street Glide, which comes in at $22,250. Now, if you want to step up to the Kawasaki Voyager, which is essentially the same engine as the Vaquero, you're looking at about $18,300, but you're also getting the Tour Pack. Now to me, the Voyager is modeled after the Ultra Limited, and it being $18,300, there's quite a bit of price difference between a new Ultra Limited, which is gonna run you just over $29,000. Now that is a very big price gap that will get your attention if you honestly don't have your heart set on a Harley Davidson or an Indian. So guys, these days, Honda really isn't offering a big V-Twin Cruiser. Yes, they still have the VTX 1300, which is now the Sabre, which somebody needs to tell Honda, chopper styling really isn't in these days. And of course they have the shadow line. And of course we can't forget Honda with their Goldwing motorcycles. Those aren't going anywhere and those definitely have their place out on the open road and on open highway touring. And then of course there's Suzuki, which they really don't offer anything in the big heavyweight B-twin category. And I mean that by saying we've got a big bearing, this thing can go for the long haul. Now with lower prices, these alternative cruisers, you do have to give up some other aspects that you would normally get with a Harley Davidson or an Indian, like colors. Pretty much all of the metric motorcycles, they only come in one color. Whether you like it, you hate it, this is what it is, this is what we got, take it or leave it. Now Indian for quite a while has only offered about two or three different color options depending on the model. And now Harley Davidson has just released their 2022 models and most models only have three colors as an option unless you get into the specials in the touring line. But at least with Harley Davidson or an Indian, you do have some options on color. At least if you don't like any other color, you can just get black because, well, black goes with everything. Now also with a metric motorcycle, the other issue that we're going to run into is you start feeling like the bike needs some more power. Now sure, there are high flow air cleaners, there are exhaust systems, and there are fuel tuners available for these bikes. But outside of that, parts get pretty scarce. You can't just go out and get an off-the-shelf big bore kit and pack a bunch of power into these bikes like you can with a Harley Davidson or an Indian. Yeah, yeah, I guess one could argue that with it being a metric, you don't need to do all that stuff, but eventually we all get used to the power output of our bike and we're looking for some good upgrades. Now, and also with metric cruisers, I don't want you guys to think I'm dogging metric cruisers, but I'm just trying to give you the truth here. With metric cruisers, they're often not popular enough to wear the aftermarket really picks up a big support base for them. So as much as the metric manufacturers change their bikes up, change their parts up, new engine designs, a lot of times the parts become very hard to come by for these motorcycles. You don't have this huge aftermarket with all these supporting parts. Your only parts supplier is really the OEM. And as they start discontinuing parts for these motorcycles, you have to rely on new old stock or used parts so if you were to have a major failure, it almost becomes more cost effective to just replace the bike as a whole and send it to on its way to the scrapyard. Honestly, the reality is it's like the metric manufacturers have almost given up trying to compete with Harley Davidson Indian, and they're really just letting them have this segment. So guys, I really hope that gave you a look at kind of the big twin cruiser market out there and what's available outside of Harley Davidson and Indian. Kawasaki, definitely one of the cheaper choices. Yamaha, very primo choice. But 
investing that kind of money, and I'm already there within two or three thousand dollars of a Harley or an Indian. I almost, I kind of have to pop for the Harley Davidson or the Indian, but everybody's different, and don't get me wrong, that Yamaha, that is one strong motorcycle, and I guarantee you, that thing will run for years and years and years without any issues, as long as you keep up on the maintenance, just like anything. But anyhow, guys, that's all I've got for you this week. Be sure to let me know in the comments what you think. Would you pop for the Yamaha, or would you still go for the Harley or the Indian, or would you take the cheaper option with a Kawasaki? But before I let you go today, guys, don't forget, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, and please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. But until next week, you guys stay safe on the streets, ride smart, dodge those cars, and I'll catch you guys back here next week with a brand new video. Thanks for watching.